If you're looking to get your own The Batman 2022 Robert Pattinson Batman cowl, then watch this video because I got one from Etsy, and this is what happened. This is my old Batman cowl, and as you can see, it's modeled after the Christian Bale Dark Knight trilogy, and it's also made out of rubber. Latex rubber, and it's funny because on camera, visually, it doesn't look too bad, but physically, it's actually rather uncomfortable. And that's even after some trimmings and modifications that I made to the eye holes that would cause irritation on the eyes, very difficult to breathe, and also even more difficult to put on and off. It was just... It was just a hassle to deal with this cowl for the specific occasions that I've worn it in some of the videos that you guys have seen, such as my review for the Batman NES game towards a little skit there in the middle, as well as a couple of short videos that I've posted on social media. Well, the time has come to move on for a new Batman cowl, considering that we have a new Batman movie coming out very, very soon. And I reached out to someone over on Etsy to commission a specifically tailor-made cowl just for me, modeled after the Robert Pattinson The Batman 2022 costume. So it has finally arrived now as you might be able to see it's already open and that's because this is actually the second time that I have received this due to a slight sizing error on my part on the original version. So that's why this video couldn't get done a little earlier because I had to reach out to the uh, the maker, the artist over on Etsy who goes by the name of MasterForge3D. And before we even get to the actual content of the cowl here as well as the rest of the video, I just want to give a shout out to this creator, this artist over on Etsy, Ryan aka MasterForge3D. I'm going to go ahead and plug not only his personal Etsy shop page in the description below but also the specific link to the product page for this cowl because he was very nice very accommodating he walked me through the whole step of the process answered any questions that I had and when I did have the issue with the sizing of the original cowl and I needed to perform an exchange and be able to have everything kind of fixed he took care of the entire ordeal and he was be able he was able to answer promptly when he was able to uh, of course you know the timing may vary depending on how many orders he's got because he's just that much of a busy creator but that's only that only speaks testament to the quality of the cowls and the reviews that he's been getting so if you guys are in the market for getting a batman 2022 robert pattinson cowl please check him out whether it be right now or at the end of the video once you finally finished it and would see the finished product check out the links in the description no affiliate link no nothing like that i just want to plug him in and have you guys check him out masterforce 3d again his page is going to be in the description or as a pinned comment but because of that mishap that i originally did try to film and to my dismay the sizing ended up being a little too big for me i thought to myself okay no more specific unboxings waiting just to get it recorded i opened it checked it out, tested it out, and yes, the sizing is has been corrected, and this is the final product that I'm going to be utilizing as my cowl from here on out, and so let's go ahead and check out what you get. So, if you order off of this page, you have the option to either do the mask by itself, the mask with the neck piece, or the mask and the collar and no neck piece, or if you just want the collar and the neck piece but no mask because you already made your own, or do what I do and order the entire set of all three pieces. So upon ordering from Masterforge 3D on Etsy, you will get the Batman cowl. Right there, which is the first piece. You get the, let's see if I can get it out of here because it does get stuck a little towards the bottom. You get the collar. Right there, of course, that's the color piece that he has around the rim of his cape at the very top. And lastly, you get the neck piece. And this is going to be, of course, the piece wrapped around the neck that basically goes at the baseline of your neck, but underneath the collar. So it's all meant to be kind of going in like about like this. And then the cowl. More so like about right there. And this is pretty much the entire set that you get upon request from Masterforge 3D. And as you can see right there, it is 3D printed, 
but, but as you can also tell, it's white, which is where my own personal adjustments are going to come into play here because he does make it known uh, from the very get-go on that product page that because of the way that the filament comes out of the 3D printer, you are going to have to apply something called Plasti Dip, which is what I'm going to do in this next segment of the video. I am going to apply Plasti Dip to this entire set to give it a much more textured, rubberized, kind of matte black finish so that it looks appropriate. That first version that ended up being the wrong size did come with the black filament, but it still had this glossy 3D printer filament texture to it. So obviously we got to fix that. Now what is Plasti Dip? And I'll go into more detail in this next segment of the video, but Plasti Dip has been acquired, goes for about five bucks at your local hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, you name it. And it's pretty much a spray on paint, also removable in case you want to uh, get rid of it but it's mostly used for like car decals and stuff like that but ultimately this is going to come in clutch to make sure that we have an accurate looking batman cowl along with that i'm also going to be making a couple of refinements myself the two of which stand out to me the most is going to be on the neck piece because if you couldn't already tell a little bit of the back side here is a little too long in terms of circumference for my personal neck because i am a little bit of a pencil neck <laughs> so i am gonna have to make some trimmings to make sure that it wraps around the neck and closes in properly without overlaying too much but at the same time making sure that i can breathe properly and move my neck just like christian bale wanted to do in the dark knight so in order to do so i'm going to be taking my exact detail knife here making some trimmings and making sure everything is, of course, done properly with the help, hopefully, of a, a second party, probably my girlfriend. We shall see how that unfolds. But then amongst that, I'm also going to be able to add either some kind of Velcro adhesives on both ends to be able to make sure it's tied together. Maybe a zipper, one of those like adjustable zippers that you can apply to the edge of things so that you're able to custom make a zipper grips to make sure that you can make it a little bit more easier and convenient and secure. And then, of course, the final little detail, I also want to make sure I can get right is on the cowl itself where... Despite the sizing coming out right the second time around, it is a little bit round shaped. And if you guys haven't seen me on camera too frequently, it's because I tried to hide my rather elongated head. You can kind of see from the back right here. So I have more of an oval shape. So I kind of want to make a slight little adjustment to the actual molding of the filament here to make sure that it's much more oval shaped because I know that when pressed into the its inside from the sides here it fits a whole lot better than it does uh preliminarily so i want to be able to see if i can use some kind of uh hair dryer or a hot air gun and just kind of give it a once over with some slight pressure to the sides to make sure that it's then molded to the proper sizing of my head despite the sides already being accurate and uh proper this time around so without further ado let's go ahead and make those adjustments in the second part of the video and then see how it turns out in its final result So first things first, it's going to be sanding and sanitizing, rather, or sterilizing all three pieces, making sure that the surfaces are rather smooth and clean and de devoid of any kind of oils or textures or dust or anything that could be causing an issue of the plastic dip actually gripping onto the surfaces themselves. This was all advised by Ryan, aka Masterforge 3D, and I wholeheartedly agree, so I made sure to have all three uh, pieces of the cowl properly sanded and cleaned and made sure that the surfaces surfaces were completely devoid of any of those chemicals and materials one thing that i did want to try before plastic dipping actually two things uh, out of all the pieces the collar was the only one that didn't really need any kind of modifications like i mentioned the cowl on the other hand i wanted to ovalize a little bit so i took a hair dryer and kind of blew lightly on low heat on the inside to kind of press up uh, on the sides or rather the temples of the cowl and have it be a little bit more oval and akin to my actual ovalized kind of shape of heads to make sure that 
it had just a much better fit than the sizing was already enabling so I made sure to have that done before plastic dipping the cowl itself as well as making some slight trimmings to the sides of the neck piece because they were kind of getting in the way of my shoulders since I don't necessarily have the most broad shoulder length and the lovely girlfriend helped out with pretty much all of these endeavors sanding making sure everything is set up properly and even a little bit of that cutting on the side since I don't know I was just not making any kind of progress with my detail knife I was originally gonna cut the back side of the neck just to have the actual circumference of the neck piece be a little bit smaller but upon further inspection I noticed I couldn't really turn my head I was turning more into Keaton rather than Bale or Pattinson so because of that I decided to just leave those areas of the neck piece alone and eventually maybe rectify that with some kind of zipper or velcro piece but we'll tackle that in the foreseeable future once those processes were finished it was time to plasti dip all three pieces of course i started with the cowl which frankly i i honestly don't know why i did that to myself because i feel like i should have practiced on the collar since that's the one that needed the less detailing and examination but nevertheless i was eager to see how the mask itself uh, actually looked after plasti dipping so I added one wet and very firm coat and at first glance it looked actually rather well it actually had the, the plastic dip gripping onto it and having a really even texture of course it looked a little I don't want to say faded but it just didn't look like it was firmly on there the way I wanted to but that's come to be expected because everybody in the YouTube videos that I watched and then of course Master Forge 3D himself said that you'd want to start with about two to three coats on average maybe four or five depending on just how much detailing and how much coverage you want on the pieces so subsequently I added two more coats to the mask itself it was upon these further coats, especially the middle one, where something was going on with my can. It was starting to release the plastic dip out of the nozzle and little currents rather than one swift motion. And because of that, it was unfortunately creating just a couple of splotches on the sides and in the back. Thankfully, the third and fourth coat were able to kind of cover these up and give it a much smoother texture amongst the cowl, but there were still a couple of little imperfections here or there. A similar case could be argued for both the collar and the neck pieces. The collar actually ended up being the smoothest, smoothest of them all, but at the same time, it makes sense because it was the piece that had like the least crevices and, and, and curves and detailings and bendings to its actual shape. And on top of that, it's also the most flexible shape because it's the one that's a bit more open rather than closed but you still have flexibility within the material of the filament so being able to add that plastic dip it was smoother on the surface still again a couple of little blemishes here and there but I was able to cover them up with a second and third coat and then the neck piece is actually the one that I spent the least amount of time as far as applying coats because I knew that this is the piece that's going to be a little less apparent upon wearing the entire set especially if I do manage to get the rest of the bat suit in the future this is the one that's going to be ideally covered or not really focused on when being covered up mainly by either the mask up top or the neck collar around it so because of that I thought to myself okay let's just put two coats instead of like three or four and sadly the, uh, the other reason why this was the case and why I started to kind of pull back on my coats is because a there was a little bit of dripping occurring even though I was trying to keep myself at arm's length uh, from the cowl or at least at can's length as some videos that I watched on YouTube uh, mentioned to try to do not too far but not too close so they recommended kind of like the length of the can itself would be a good distance making sure it's up properly making sure it's war a war a warmed up can because it was warmed up in a bowl of hot water uh, but not boiling so it was not necessarily like scorching hot but at the same time it was warm to the touch I followed all the steps properly and yet I still got a couple of splotches here or there a little bit of dripping that I try to cover up with subsequent coats and eventually I just hit my threshold uh, as far as patience and I just noticed that I was starting to become a little obsessed so I had to dial it back and finally finish plasti dipping so upon expecting all three pieces and making sure that there was nothing seriously wrong with them it was time to pack it up head home and deliver the final result Here you go. This is how it looks like. Worn. And after all of the plastic dipping, 
all of the sanding and the cleaning it's officially not finished and i'll tackle a little bit more of once i kind of remove this so i can elaborate it uh, elaborate on it a little bit more comfortably but speaking of comfortable well here's the thing is that i want to be able to speak much more freely because i'm a content creator but as far as actually wearing this on person the cowl itself is actually properly fit again my only little distinction is that it's a little bit more round shaped and despite blowing it with the hair dryer and kind of pressing up against the temples to have it a much more oval shape uh i don't know if it's because of the filament but admittedly it did kind of recede back to its original form but at the same time that, that's okay because as far as sizing like i mentioned the sizing is great it's just that my shape of head is differently than or slightly differently than the traditional batman cowl and also one thing i noticed is that it's been in room temperature for a couple days now after finally finishing the process. But while I was preparing for the process, it was in a much more colder temperature at my girlfriend's house because they had the heater on a little less. And when it was in that temperature, I noticed it kind of shrunk a little bit. It kind of compressed a little bit on the filament. And that's where it started to feel a little tighter and a bit more ovalized. So I was like, okay. Uh, I would probably say let me not push my luck as far as making sure that it's like a skin tight fit Plus in order to just kind of add an extra layer quite figuratively and literally of comfort Later on if I do decide to do formal cosplay with this thing on I will definitely get one of those like ski masks that kind of pull over your head But they still leave your mouth and your almost your entire face open So I'm thinking about wearing one of those so that it'll be a little bit more comfortable and plush up against my ears and the top of my head and around the sides of my head and face plus i just want to make sure that the filament is not always scraping on on my skin even though right now like i said nothing is uncomfortable i can actually wear this for a good amount of time nothing feels like it's scraping up against my face nothing is damaging me or or, or scratching me or injuring me it, it feels legitimate to my sizing and most importantly my eyes don't feel irritated like that rubber uh, latex mask that I was wearing uh, in all those other skits and I showed at the beginning of this video It's nothing like that. Like my eyes feel comfortable. Of course, I'm blind now because I lost my glasses <laughs> But that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make to make sure that I look like the Batman himself So other than that the cowl itself is really really awesome as far as fitting and comfortability once we get to the neck pieces it's a bit more variable as far as comfort because upon first wearing it prior to the plastic dipping yes admittingly it feels a little constrained it almost feels like you're wearing one of those neck braces from from when you get injured from the hospital but once you make your trimming especially like the ones that i did on the shoulder sides right here that you saw in the process i'm able to move the shoulders a bit more comfortably it does kind of rise them up a little bit but nothing too too crazy and most importantly i can breathe I can breathe and I can tilt my head and I can turn it around. It starts to kind of conflict a little bit with the cowl and the mask itself, especially with these little pieces right here, these angled pieces that cover the sides of the chin. But once you kind of start to kind of finesse and move about comfortably and you kind of know where everything is at, that's where things are going to feel a little bit uh, better and more flexible. But let me go ahead and remove this just so I can speak a little bit more freely and kind of show you up close and personal what the result of my plastic dipping, my whole entire process, and what other kind of little refinements I made and what other little refinements I'm planning to do in the foreseeable future. So let me go ahead and remove this. And while I'm on the subject of like taking it off and on, putting it on is a little tricky because there's a certain angle that you have to put it on. It's almost like you have to put it on kind of going from the back to the front. So removing it like that, in fact, removing the cowl is very, very easy and simple and painless. It's putting it on that if you do it in a very weird angle, it does kind of press up against a little bit of your nose or the ears. So it's a little tricky, but as long as you do something like this, where you start from the back and then move your way downwards, then it's a little easier than doing it from the face first. Now, with me and the sizing that I got, I do need to press up against my ears to get them flush with my face. Otherwise, my ear flaps are going to be facing downwards. But once you kind of press on your ears and make sure that they are upright, the rest is easy and it just slips right on. Whereas if I, and then removing it, you have to like kind of press up a little bit like this. And there you go. So you have to come from the back and then down, down as opposed to doing it like you're probably 
are thinking to yourself you need to put it on facing forward like this no because the way that this is all uh molded with the actual filament of the 3d printer as well as the further constraints that it now has with the added layers of plastic dip going forward there you, go. you can see it's tightening up on my face and yeah my ears flush a little bit better but i did in fact kind of press up against my face and it's a there's a little bit of pain and discomfort doing so like that so my advice if you guys are ordering this as far as taking it off and on go start from the back press backwards and then upwards and it's much more convenient and easy and painless and then of course the neck pieces are pretty self-explanatory because you start off with the cowl kind of flex it backwards like so remove it like this and then neck piece since i haven't exactly added anything here on the back just kind of separate pull out there you go so here we have the final result after all that work of my full batman 2022 robert pattinson cowl as you can see right here after all the sanding the plastic dipping the cleaning and making sure that everything is as accurate as humanly possible uh, <laughs> and overall i'm actually pretty satisfied i just knew that i had to become kind of self-aware and pull myself back a little bit as far as my work because i have a tendency to be a little bit of a perfectionist so i was starting to rage like i do at a video game i was starting to rage at me trying to get this thing as screen accurate as possible and if you want to get super technical officially officially it's not fully done because uh ryan aka master force 3d as well as plenty of people who do custom jobs for either cosplay or even for stuff on the automotive side recommend adding what's called a clear coat to things that get plastic dipped uh specifically a clear coat that's either gloss or in the case of my batman cowl here something that has kind of like a matte rubberized finish unfortunately the i have not done that to either pieces of the set and the only reason why is because unfortunately and conveniently Conveniently, not a single hardware store here in my area has that clear coat plastic dip. That's the rubberized version. There's a couple of um, Lowe's and Home Depot's that had the glossy one, but of course that's not what I'm going for. So I had to order it from Amazon and it's taking a little longer than two days. So prime shipping my ass there, but <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting on that. So that second, that first and second clear coat for all three pieces is still pending. So I've yet to do that, which is why you still have a little bit of a sheen to the overall look of all three pieces. But overall, after applying the third, fourth, and then subsequent fourth and fifth layer to the cowl, I can honestly say I'm much more pleased than I was at the very beginning. And there's certain areas of the cowl itself that feel legitimately like the real thing that I would see in the trailers and in the, the TV spots and promotional material that I've seen for the Batman thus far. And overall, I'm very, very pleased with the build quality, the flexibility, as well as the accuracy and uh, of not only the detailing with the little stitchings there, but also the overall proportion, especially for the corrected size that I got here. I'm actually pretty surprised by how well and proportioned and balanced everything else turned out to be without you know one area of the mask being too big or too bulbous or too inaccurate it's just full on what i was full on expecting i know i'm saying that quite a bit but at the same time i'm still waiting on that coat to give it that much more textured um, matte finish kind of look and kind of do away with a little bit of the sheen so i might be posting an update video on that when we get to applying that clear coat to either the cowl or the two neck pieces over here now like i said it's not perfect and i knew that i needed to accept that because if i just kept on going and going and going and adding more and more layers then you know you're, you're never going to be happy and i was starting to give myself anxiety attacks and stressing myself out where i didn't really need to be because if you look a little closer though there are surfaces that are very straightforward and very clean and very proportionate some areas of the top of the cowl weren't exactly sanded as well as i would have hoped because the more i graded the more i started to see a little bit of that um uh, the actual integrity of the cowl starting to come off not because it's you know feeble or weak but because i was just starting to go a little bit crazy with the sanding so I, again i had to pull myself back but also because the more i plasti dipped the more i was trying to get a little obsessed with trying to correct some some splotchy areas here and there predominantly 
as you can see here on the back there's a little area where a little bit of a drip started to occur so you can kind of see a little bit of a through line there as you start to see it kind of perforate and it used to be a little worse so adding another layer did kind of fix it a little bit but then I started to catch on that every time I added a new layer of plastic dip some splotchiness would then happen in other areas. So when I would cover up one section that had a little drop, it would then create another one in the surrounding area that yeah, I thought of myself, I was just, you know, kind of re rinse and repeating and it was never going to be full on fixed. But overall, what I was ended up, what I was dealt with here as a final result is really, really cool. Like I said, there's just a couple of imperfections here. There's one on near the left ear where you can kind of see just one little drip that started to kind of press up on itself. So if any of you have any formal solutions on how to correct these little imperfections, these little mini splotches without having to apply a whole nother coat of Plasti Dip, please let me know in the comments below because I would really gladly appreciate the help. But overall, that is the coat. And as you can see, yeah, I did not plastic dip the inside. I know I could have done that, but at the same time, I'm going to be wearing it. And nobody's really going to see that. So I'm not going to really stress myself with trying to get it full on accurate. Um, so that is the cowl right, th right there. And as I noted before, I noticed that I had a slightly easier time plastic dipping and coating the other two pieces, mainly the collar here. This is the one that I think ended up being the most uh, convenient one because it's just all one solid piece with just one solid curvature all the way around without any kind of intricate pieces. And as you can see, the matte finish around the side to the point where I don't think this one needs the clear coat, but I might just add one layer just to kind of give it that overall accurate look. Now it was a little uh, splotchy and weird kind of on the inside. You can see a little bit of drips and spacing out right there. But again, that's because I kind of pulled back a little bit on the effort of wanting to plastic dip the inside because again, it's going to be coiling around my neck right here. And I, the idea is to want to have the cape kind of coming from within here. So it's going to be covering that area. And again, most of my neck and this neck piece is going to be taking up that space. So that's going to be kind of w hidden within view. The important part was more so the outer part to make sure that the matte finish came across really well there. One little word of caution, however, this is also the most flexible piece. The other two are much more rigid. This one's the one that has just a little bit of flex within the layers of the filament that this was printed out of. And because of that, I would say just be, you know, kind of, uh, I don't, uh, delicate with it. Because if you did not apply the necessary layers, it's possible that maybe you could be uh, uh, subsequent to cracking, especially if this is not stored in the adequate temperature. So because of that, you could risk cracking your plastic dip or tearing it because of the way that this is much more flexible than the other pieces. I, for one, had uh, some difficulty plastic dipping all the way across this bottom rim right here, which again, is not really gonna be very viewable to the public, but I did notice after my first coat, when I kind of took it off my surface of that cardboard or that those uh, trash bags that were on that shelf, a uh, little piece kind of came off right here and I had to plastic dip a whole another layer uh, on top of it because it was becoming delicate due to its flexibility. So that's one thing to take of note when it comes to the collar piece. And the neck, though very rigid and much more firmer than the collar, it's also the one that proved to be just a little more challenging when it came to just the actual technique of plastic dipping because of how many ridges and details are going on right here in the middle throat area of the neck line. Uh, as far as like the back parts right here, these were easy to plastic dip. But again, this is the part of the process where I started to become a little crazy with the plastic dip and make sure that it's accurate that if you look a little closer, you can see a little bit of dripping going on right there on the under layer that I had to cover up. It was much worse than it was before. So thankfully, a second layer was able to mask that somewhat. But again, I wasn't too stressed out about it as I would have been if I had kept at it because then I had to think about it and go, the collar is going to be over it as well as potentially the cape should I go for the full suit later on in the, in the in the future. And because of that, I thought to myself, all right, don't worry about covering this up 100%. Focus on the much showier, showier part of the neck, which is going to be this area right here. Now, this is probably the only piece out of all this right here that requires even more finessing and more details to be added because even though I did trim the areas right here to allow more mobility of my shoulders uh, as far as like the little modifications. One thing that I do want to do is not necessarily trim this area, but add either a zipper or a, a Velcro piece of some kind so that this can kind of remain attached 
and secure around the neck while at the same time not limiting my breathing or my mobility of the neck from left to right and turn into Keaton Batman. But it came to this area right here that required actually a third coat of the Plasti Dip. It was overall two coats, but it was right here where I concentrated a little bit more of my efforts. And as you can see, you can see that the blackness of the Plasti Dip is a little stronger and a little thicker on this area right here. And it's not even 100% applied. As you can see, a little bit around this uh, Adam's Apple area right here, the trachea, if you will where it's a little more faded than it is on these other pieces right here because that's that was a little bit more difficult to get to without tipping the can in either direction because it's supposed to stay upright. So that's where I unfortunately did not pay closely attention. But at the same time, not stressing out too much because this is the underside. The only real way to see this is if somebody's like, like that so because of that i i really wasn't too stressed out about it but once again i was starting to go a little overboard with the plastic dipping you can see a little bit of drippage right there on the under layer of this version of the plastic dip right there so basically i want this segment of the video as i showcase all three pieces for the final time after their pla proper uh black plastic dipping but prior to getting that clear coat that it's not going to be perfect as much as i wanted it to be due to my necessities to want something very screen accurate when it comes to either my Batman cosplay or my Spider-Man cosplay. You also have to you know, learn that you're not a robot, you are a human, and this was arguably my first time trying something as ambitious as this because I've never tackled cosplay in this sense where I ordered something from Etsy that's like a full-on 3D printed asset that then requires more modifications and stitchings and trimmings as well as paint applications of my own that I just wasn't uh, ever thinking to myself I was going to be in this position and yet here I am and the final result overall very satisfied I just know that there's a couple of imperfections that are mostly on my part and not so much on the Etsy sellers master force 3d once again guys if you're in the market for a Batman Robert Pattinson 2022 cowl he's the guy to go I've seen a couple of others on Etsy but to be honest when it comes to like screen accuracy as far as how it looks as well as how flexible and durable of a, of a piece you're really getting this is going to be it right here. From time to time, the filament might come in either white, clear, or black, depending on his supply. But if you just follow the instructions carefully as far as your research for how to apply Plasti Dip on cosplay pieces, and if you're willing to put the work and the effort like I wanted to do at least for once, then it, this is going to be ultimately your result. And I would say, if you're willing to take that chance, you got the money, you got the time, like I did, then there you go, and it'll arrive just on time for either the release of the Batman, or if not, Halloween sometime this year or in the foreseeable future. And now the only step forward is to now get the rest of the costumes somehow, some way, but patience is the virtue, and money's a little bit tight right now, especially with all the games that are coming out. And because of that, I wanted to really put my efforts and my money towards the cowl first, and then from, that, uh, from this point forward, then we'll kind of look at what I can get for the chest armor as well as the shoulder pieces and the rest of the costume so that hopefully maybe come ha Halloween time I will be the Batman. So once again check out Master Force 3D over on Etsy if you guys want to get your own like I said you got the option of just doing the mask or if you want the mask with the neck piece or if you want the mask neck piece and collar all three pieces in the full set the options can vary over there on Etsy, so feel free to check out the page. I'm going to link it in the description as well as a pinned comment. And also his shop if you're in the market for other pieces. I think he does other Mandalorian stuff, Boba Fett stuff. Check it out. And uh, yeah, highly re recommend this whole uh, ensemble. And he's also very community, uh, uh, communicative. Communi communicative? He communicates very well. I mean, from time to time, it takes a little bit of time because he's busy tackling other jobs that he has coming through th uh, with Etsy. But as far as very descriptive and very informative, I, I mean, he, he types up paragraphs. So he lets you know exactly what you're in for as far as making your purchases, helping out with shipping, and helping out with making sure that this is your end result and it looks awesome. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Look forward to my review of the Batman. I'm hoping to have that on the day it comes out, March 4th. In the meantime, though, check out this other video showing up on screen right now for some more Batman goodness. And as always, guys, stay humble.